Okay, good day. Uh, welcome to another episode of A Seat at the Table. My name is Dr. Mike Flotis, and I'm fortunate to work with 5,000 colleagues and serve as Chancellor of the Alamo College's District. Uh, before we join our guest today, I'd actually we're going to try something uh, unique, and I'd like to welcome as our online guest to the show, uh, Josh Weiner. I had the opportunity to sit down for a virtual interview with uh, Josh, who joined us remotely from Washington, D.C. Some of you may know that Josh is the founder and executive director of the College Excellence Program at the Aspen Institute, which uh, the Alamo Colleges, each of the Alamo Colleges has been fortunate to be recognized, and the district overall for its efforts in facilitating and promoting student success. On today's show, we're going to update you on our success at helping students transfer to a university using the Alamo Institute's, our pathway model, and in particular, our transfer advising guides, which we call TAGS. Uh, Josh provides a national perspective on the pathways model and the issue of providing a seamless transfer for students. So um, now we'll present our interview. Hello, Josh, and thank you for joining us today virtually uh, for a seat at the table. As you know, the Alamo Colleges, all five of our colleges, have been on a journey to save students time and also money by creating partnerships with uh, universities and creating over 1,500 personalized guides for students. And in Alamo, we call them transfer advising guides. And these tags ensure that uh, when a student transfers to a university, that every class counts towards a student's degree. This is a mission that has been articulated by our board and we've effectuated through these 1500 tags. Um, we've been able at Alamo, as you know, to save students uh, thousands of dollars in tuition and have shaved nearly a year off the average time to degree completion in just the last five years. So I wanted to get your sense of what that looks like. Um, Josh, the work our colleges have done towards guided pathways for students have been recognized uh, specifically by the Aspen Institute, by the College Excellence Program. Can you tell us how the work at Alamo Colleges aligns with uh, best practices across the United States? Sure, Mike. Well, well first, let me uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to chat today. And and to congratulate you on what you've accomplished. So first I would say that the guided pathways work at Alamo is exemplary. And I think what you've recognized as hundreds of colleges across the country have, is that the, um, the approach of letting students wander through a curriculum and choose courses without a guide post, set of guideposts, doesn't work for them. And that's not to say that students shouldn't be able to explore, but rather it is to say that students should be given some um, uh, curated opportunity to think about what they want to do, to really help them decide that early on. You know, no 18-year-old and often not a 29-year-old uh, or a 40-year-old knows fully what is available to them. And so creating these clear guided pathways that are connected to career clusters and we know down towards transfer opportunities to bachelor's degrees to good jobs is absolutely critical. And I think lots of colleges have recognized that and hundreds are engaged in guided pathways work. What is exceptional about Alamo's work is the um, discipline through which you've done that, the clarity and milestones you've created along the way at 15 credits, 30 credits, 45 credits, et cetera, um, and your commitment to align those pathways and the advising structures you've created to post-graduation success. You know, th this is no small thing, uh, Mike. Um, Colleges are funded by enrollments, and we move for 20 years towards the idea of completion plus access as being critical to align then the access and completion and learning that happens to what comes next through your transfer pathways really is advanced practice. It's really advanced guided pathway practice. So what I would say is that your work on program pathways, your work on advising is uh, quite good. It's really um, among the best we've seen in the country. Uh, but uh, what also distinguishes Alamo is that clear alignment to what comes next. Um, and as you've said, that's important because it creates efficiencies for students. It creates clarity. And frankly, it makes sure that students are prepared for what college, for your colleges and universities expect. And we shouldn't assume that, um, that every course is aligned with their expectations. 
So th these pathways and the work you've done, I think, really is aligned to the thinking in the field and to advanced practice in the field. Well, thank you, Josh. I want to I want to take a minute to underscore what you said, which it it uh, is recognized it as advanced practice. Uh, many of my colleagues uh, join us for a seat at the table, and I want to recognize them for their efforts, um, beginning with our board of trustees and and including our faculty and staff, um, because we often in higher ed don't take time to recognize and celebrate uh, the milestones that have been achieved. And so, for all of the colleges um, being recognized by uh, Aspen Institute and the College Excellence Program, you mentioned. Um, uh, looking at, in particular, the alignment and looking at the guided pathways, is there anything that uh, we should be mindful at Alamo Colleges about what does is, what is the next stage look like? So we have uh, academic advisors, we have our transfer advising guides that are effectuating that alignment to ensure students save time and money and transfer to the university. What, what else are you seeing um, that we should be mindful of at Alamo? Yeah, I think um, the next stage of the work is really to jointly work with your four-year colleges to think about which pathways are aligned to good jobs and making sure that there's equitable opportunity for those good job pathways through the bachelor's degree. I think often in community colleges, we prepare students either for jobs or for transfer. Right? And that makes sense because that's the next stage in their work. Um, the challenge comes when your four-year partner may or may not think about the alignment of their bachelor's degrees to good jobs and may not be thinking about equity for students of color, for lower income students in the higher value bachelor degree pathways, um, in STEM fields, in, in um, uh, some other fields that we know. Actually, philosophy and English do pretty well in the labor markets uh, subsequent to graduation. So it's not just uh, um, uh, things like uh, engineering and nursing that uh, are, are clearly job related. And so I do think that the next stage of the work is to ask ourselves the question, not just whether students have clear pathways to credentials at the community college that align to any four-year degree, but to start looking at who within our colleges is in different pathways. Do those students go on to four-year colleges where they finish bachelor's degrees that have labor market value. If they don't, do they go on to get graduate degrees? So let's take a couple of examples, right? You can have a student in biology or psychology um, who are getting a bachelor's degree. And you might say, wow, biology, STEM field, it's a great one. We actually have in the country and in many communities an overproduction of psychology and uh, uh, biology bachelor's degrees. Now, those are terrific if you go on to get a master's in social work for psychology, or you go on to get a medical degree in biology or a PhD. Uh, but if you're not going to, you might be better served in yeah. nursing uh, or business or another, or, or frankly, philosophy, mm -hmm. where you, you're more likely to get a job right out of a bachelor's degree program. Um, so the question then is, Who's in which pathways? Do they understand the full pathway to a credential of value? And are we working with our four-year partners to align the pathways we build to bachelor's degrees of value equitably distributed? I want to. I want to thank you. I think one of the things, Josh, that you that you mentioned, and we need to underscore is the intersectionality, right, between uh, pathway alignment and uh, equity. So what does that look like? And for us to be mindful uh, of that work. And so um, I'm going to ask you for any any concluding thoughts or comments as we end this segment. And we're fortunate that Josh joined us uh, for a seat at the table. Josh, any final comments or words? No, just um, again, I, I, uh, you thanked me for Aspen's recognition <laughs> of your work. Really, the thanks goes the other way. We have learned a lot from you, uh, Mike, and your work uh, at Palo Alto and now as the chancellor of the system um, and uh, from, from other colleges in your system. Uh, San Antonio, we visited recently as part of the prize process. We've learned a lot from you about what change looks like. And Aspen's work in leadership development, our work in helping the field understand what excellence looks like, depends on the persistent, focused, 
work in student success and equity that the Alamo colleges have done and others like you that have been Aspen Prize finalists. So I just wanna close by thanking you because not only uh, are you helping many, many students in your community, um, hundreds of thousands over time, millions over time, but you're helping the field understand how to move this work forward. It's hard work, it's rewarding work, it takes time, and uh, thank you for all that you've done and your leadership. I want to thank you, Josh, for joining us. Um, it's particularly important, I think, for my uh, 5,000 colleagues and then for all of us to ensure we back up our students, our 65,000 plus. We look forward uh, to May, and we know San Antonio College, as you mentioned, is uh, one of the top 10 and uh, look forward to that announcement. And uh, most importantly, we look forward to celebrating the, our students crossing the finish line, which is a milestone in graduations that will occur in the next few months. So thank you, Josh, for joining us. Thanks, Mike. Good to be with you. All right. Well, good afternoon. And um, that uh, great insight and discussion from Josh Weiner at the national level. We're fortunate as uh, part of uh, today's engagement to also have our board chair, Dr. Gene Sprague. Um, he has actually been with the, uh, as a board of trustee for 26 years. And so we're fortunate that he has, uh, is now serving uh, as board chair with us once again, um, as part of that work. And Dr. Sprague, uh, we uh, have uh, some, some questions and I know that you also have some comments relative to that and the words that he mentioned that Josh did as part of the discussion. And then we also have this, um, this afternoon and would like to welcome Dr. Taylor uh, Amy, who is a fantastic partner in his role as president of the University of Texas, San Antonio, UTSA. And UTSA has been one of the, was the first compact partner uh, with the Alamo Colleges District, and they are our largest receiving institution. I'm gonna begin with Dr. Sprague and posing a question. There were some words, Dr. Sprague, that Josh mentioned as part of the discussion. He talked about discipline, clarity, persistence. He talked about that this is really a big deal, that it's no small thing. So, um, you know, the, the board, as you know, has consistently encouraged guided pathways for students from the first semester to the final semester and a warm handoff uh, either to Dr. Amy and his colleagues at UTSA or to the workplace. How have you seen that effort evolve um, over over your your time on the board? Well, you know, I, it 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 started it started with uh, with the pathway concept and the advising concept, which uh, which you, uh, Dr. Flores, had a played a big part in uh, uh, a committee that that got our advising uh, program going. But those were two critical elements in there, uh, and then followed that were the were the our institutes, our six institutes, which really further structured the pathways, uh, and then the alignment with uh, with uh, courses, uh, careers aimed at different universities' requirements, uh, and and what what uh, they looked forward to in terms of prerequisites, uh, and then the really the. The, I guess the crowning uh, crowning touch on that was uh, was our tag system, our tra our transfer uh, uh, system. Uh, probably I don't think very very few people in the country realize the extent of that program. Uh, there are other people that have, other institutions have uh, have instituted uh, transfer guides, but our system is really unique. And that's because of the hard work and dedication of, of our people that not only do they look to see if we align with the, uh, the various universities and colleges, they go a step further and work with the, those colleges and universities on their own catalog to make sure that that we we align and they align with us to take advantage of our students, and uh, and along with that, uh, I think most institutions have said once we complete this exhaustive task, because it's 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 course by course, that 
we will guarantee not to change those requirements in our catalog for at least five years. So, uh, and then, and when they do get revised, we'll work with, with Alamo on that. So, so to me, we, this, we're, we are uniquely situated in, in, the, in the realm of college education in terms of the transfer. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sprague, and, and you're right. I just uh, through through your service and and championing, you've seen and have supported right the um, the start of Alamo Advise, a case management model um, uh, through all five colleges, as well as the pathways. And so um, we've we've come a long way. And so uh, what 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 do you think is uh, next? What tangible results should we look for? What are you going to charge charge us with as we move forward? Yeah, you know, I, I, and we have elements of this already, but what came, uh, came through, uh, uh, with our, our talk with Josh is the, uh, uh, the look at, at, uh, career, uh, counseling at not, you know, not looking at career job opportunities as you're about to leave the door, uh, but career counseling as you come in the door uh, that that puts it out. We, we do have elements in place, but puts it out in a much bigger, succinct style of where are the opportunities now? And, you know, I didn't know that uh, I kind of suspected maybe biology and psychology were fell into that realm, uh, you know, simply because, you know, uh, I've hired a lot of biology majors out of, uh, out of college, a lot of them from UTSA. Uh, but, you know, my word to them is, where are you going? <laughs> where are you going from here after you work for me for maybe five years or so? Uh, do you have other aspirations? Uh, and you need graduate training and those yes. or medical training. But yeah, I, th I think that we give them giving them a real statistic on uh, on the exact fields that really have a surplus uh, without a, a very advanced degree. I think tremendously, uh, you know, and and what the pay scale is, and all those elements that go and satisfaction that go with those degrees. Uh, I think that's critical. Yeah. Well, I, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sprague. And so in looking at the evolution, um, Taylor, one of the things is uh, looking at our 12,000 graduates every year, and we send you a, a good portion of those. And so uh, you're our top receiving institution. Um, what What is critical um, to UTSA as part of this partnership? Um. Well, before I dive in, I, I want to say a couple things because that's an important question. First, it's a real honor to be on this with you. And it's also an honor to be on this with Dr. Sprague. He's a, a faculty member here at UTSA in our biomedical engineering program at the graduate level. And so it's it's nice to have this conversation with both of you. Mike, I, I need to say this as well. You and I have, we kind of started at the same time about three years ago, uh, three and a half years ago. And we've worked on a whole bunch of things together that don't relate exactly to today's conversation. I'm thinking about managing an institution during a pandemic and economic recession. I'm thinking about the ballot initiative we we really worked hard on last 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 year that resulted in its passage in November. I'm thinking about our our uh, pilot program for for supporting our kids with a history of foster care, which is wildly successful. These are things that we get the pleasure to work on together. And it's one of the best things about my job is that your institutions and UTSA are really sister institutions. So I'm very, very happy to say that. Um, I also wanna say this too. Um, the reason why we're able to have this conversation today is we both deeply believe in this notion that a, a two or four year degree, a higher education experience is the great equalizer we're all born with the same potential, but not given the same opportunities. But a degree from ACD or a degree from UTSA makes a huge difference in the trajectory of an individual. Um, uh, what's interesting to, to point out is the umbilical cord between ACD and, and UTSA. And so let me 
dive into a few things um, that that speak to this. Uh, we're at an enrollment now. We're, we haven't caught up with you yet. We're at an enrollment of about uh, 35,000 students and 30,000 of them are undergrads. 40% um, of our undergraduates are transfers and over half of that population of transfers comes from ACD. So your five institutions are the principal uh, source of, of transfer students that are coming to UTSA. And what's, what's interesting to share is that we both have been deeply committed to this seamless transition from ACD to UTSA. We've been working on it since we both got here. I know our institutions were tackling it actually before we both started back when you were president at Palo Alto. And uh, I only have one little data point about this, but it's worth mentioning. I'm not gonna give the student's name, but it's out there on Twitter. When it was announced uh, that you and I would be having this conversation, uh, this student posted on Twitter on March 20th, replying to at UTSA and replying at SAC PR and five others. And the student said this, NVC to UTSA was a simple, painless process for me, mainly because of my tag. I knew I was already ready to succeed at UTSA before I even got there, mainly because of their help. So I think there's a one little data point that talks about the, the benefit of all the hard work that's happened between our institutions. And so I, I, I have to say this, um, we are uh, seeing increases in applications, enrollment and graduation of ACD students here at UTSA. Our applications have gone up, our enrollments have gone up, even our graduate student enrollments from ACD have gone up. And uh, overall, we've seen a 42% increase in the number of UTSA graduates that were transfers from ACD over the last five years. And I have to also brag on you a little bit because the um, <clears throat> uh, the students that we're getting from ACD, your five institutions, are doing better at one-year retention, two-year graduation rates, and four-year graduation rates compared to the other two-year institutions that we are getting transfer students from. So this all points to things that we're doing well, and it points to the fact that we have more work to do, I think, because uh, both of us are, are planning for enrollment growth over the the next whatever number of years, I think we're gonna do more of this and we're gonna be better at it. Uh, and I know we're gonna talk about this dual admission and enrollment agreement stuff first, but I just also wanna give a shout out to these things. You all have this very highly regarded and famous Alamo promise and we, we kind of jumped on that and created our own bold promise and we have some work to do still, but I think the notion of going from an Alamo promise to a bold promise to attend for four years for free is something that we really wanna work on. We have this financial aid consortium we're part part of, and we have this dual admission, dual enrollment efforts around Alamo runners, Alamo on track, and this seamless three-tier transfer from high school to UTSA through ACD. And all of these things all speak to this the stuff that that we all care about. Um, so so that's why this is important to us. That's why we are we are deeply connected as institutions and we're morally aligned as institutions. And I couldn't be happier to have this partnership with you and, and this friendship and, and collegiality that we have. We're, we're, we're talking practically on a weekly basis. So, so it's a real pleasure. Thank, thank you, Taylor. And so there are several points and I know that, uh, I, I, Dr. Sprague, I know that's affirming to me and I'm sure it is. And, and looking at uh, the trajectory over uh, so many years and in particular over the last decade, plus, right, um, and being able to provide, as the student tweeted, right, the value of the transfer advising guide coming from Northwest Vista College and then being able to seamlessly transfer uh, to UT San Antonio, I think is significant. We we also pulled and looked at our own data, um, Taylor, and um, one of, the, one of those is we can see over the last five years in particular that students now, uh, it used to take them four and a half years to graduate with an associate's degree. And uh, three, three quarters of our students are part-time. Now it only takes them uh, three and a half years to graduate. If they actually start with us, um, they're graduating with only 65 hours. And oftentimes that additional five is part of a prerequisite they may need. Um, but we want to make it as, as seamless as possible. I had asked Dr. Sprague about what's next. And so, Taylor, I'm going to ask you, so so what's next? What do you see? Well, for our partnership? Uh, 
you know, I what I want to celebrate is something that you and I really bought into when we brainstormed about it, I think three years ago, and it was this whole notion around establishing these academies around dual enrollment. Um, it was, I think it's, it's rather unique and remarkable, and we have two of them that we're going to talk about now. And uh, the reason why I want to, I, I want to emphasize this is um, it's a newer aspect of our, our strategic partnership, but it speaks to the notion of getting kids through school with a two and then a four-year degree. So you have the benefit of both degrees in as short a time as possible and getting those individuals out into the workforce in, in an area that that obviously is um, in areas where, where the, the wages and, and earnings are high and the, there's a demand for, for the jobs that are, I mean, for the students that you're, you're, you're graduating in these fields. So the fact that we, we targeted our, in our pilot program initially, um, this, this notion about a uh, uh, transfer academy for engineering and then a transfer academy for future teachers speaks to this explicitly because there's a huge demand for engineers and a huge demand for teachers. It gets actually back to um, what um, what uh, what um, uh, Josh was speaking to about if we're going to go through this effort of accelerating completion of a two and four year degree, we ought to be paying attention to the the, the tracks they're on, the the degrees they're graduating with, and what is the workforce opportunity upon graduation. And I think this fills the bill in 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 many many ways. So the we have these two these two programs we've launched, and I'm really proud about the, the Transfer Academy for Tomorrow's Engineers because I'm an engineer myself. I'm a civil <laughs> engineer, and the fact that that I just I did a little bit of homework before this call too, and I just learned from your folks that we have 57 students that have already um, applied to the Tate or the uh, Academy for wow. Tomorrow's Engineers program. So I think there's already demand in place. So that's a good thing, and. If you think about it, there's immense benefit. You get the benefit of being a student at both institutions, and then you get the benefit of being able to have access to programs at both institutions. You get to understand the culture of both institutions, the faculty of both institutions. If you progress along the uh, the, 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 the charted pathway for your engineering degree and it, we have six engineering programs at, at UTSA that you can enter through this academy. Um, it allows you to graduate in four years with a two-year degree, with a four-year degree, ready to go out in the workplace from an accredited engineering program. And uh, it allows you the benefit of both both cultures and, and, and the benefit of getting all these two degrees in four years without a heck of a lot of debt if because uh, you're not you're not delaying your time and whatnot. So so there's there's a whole bunch of good news about this and the fact that we can do this with both teaching and with engineering, I think we ought to be having conversations about adding to this mix with other things and other academies that we could do. So so if we do this right, it's speaking to the need in our community to educate and then to provide young people who are ready to go out and change the world, who are already prepared to teach or to be engineers. That's magic to me. So I want to I want to thank you, uh, Taylor, Amy, Dr. Amy, president of UTSA for joining us. I think what you underscored, what uh, what Dr. Uh, Sprague as our board chair and the trustees have charged us, and what Josh mentioned is pathways to good jobs, that they're coming to us with a pathway to a good job. Um, and so I know that uh, we had Alamo Institutes and um, then we were able to develop over 1,500 transfer advising guides. If you'd like to look at that, it's at alamo.edu forward slash transfer, and you can see our 1,500 tags. And uh, as part of this conversation, um, also, I, uh, Dr. Sprague, as I know, will, um, as we look at Alamo Institutes 2.0, will definitely be those transfer academies, uh, two of those already with UTSA, with engineering, and now with teaching. And then we need to move forward into other sectors so we could have more students tweet about the seamless experience that they've had. So um, thank you for joining us, Taylor. And of course, thank you, Dr. Sprague, for, for once again uh, being with us. And Dr. Sprague is, is very much a Renaissance man. So he has a UT, uh, he's been with UT Health for an equal amount of time that he's been on our trustees. And actually, Dr. Sprague, you serve as an adjunct faculty member at UTSA for one of those programs. 
Yeah. Hey, Mike, I'm also going to stay on because you're going to be interviewing Sarah oh. Foster, who's no. a roadrunner. So I'm going to just no. sit and watch as TPR okay. does that. But thank you both very much for all that you do. So uh, thank you all. Thank, so thank you, Dr. Amy. All right. Final. is listening in as we know he is the um in charge of utsa so today i want to first of all talk to uh dr flores ask you big picture you were saying that over the five or so years that transfer advising guides have been in existence uh students at the alamo colleges have um been able to shave off about a year of their time at alamo colleges right I, the the whole goal is for it to be uh convenient and also uh, cost effective right so we want to save time and money um, make it seamless and so the vast majority of our students are part-time we've been able over the last five years to go from graduates uh, taking about four and a half years to three and a half years and if students start with us then they will actually graduate with their associate's degree with about 65 hours. And oftentimes those additional credits are prerequisites that they're gonna to need to transfer to the university. So uh, we love our students and we want them to be challenged with us, but we also want them to move on to the next stage uh, of their, their lives. And this was, uh 
designed to kind of solve a problem, right? That there were students at, at your colleges and a lot of community colleges across the country that were taking classes that, come to find out, didn't transfer to the four-year school that they wanted to go to afterwards. So this is intended to say, this is what class you need to take, and you're guaranteed it will transfer to the four-year of your choice, right? There's a whole long list of advising guides. You choose which which four-year university you want to go to, which degree you want to obtain, and you just kind of follow the checklist of what you take. Is that correct? Right. There's actually about uh, 1,500 what we call TAGs, Transfer Advising Guides. You can go to alamo.edu forward, uh, forward slash transfer, and then you'll see all the TAGs. Um, the, yeah, that, that is a whole goal, but it's not in isolation. Um, the pathways or the institutes work in tandem with the advisor and then also conversations with the faculty member. So we, we want to make sure that, um, that the student can work with a couple of uh, caring professionals to move them, answer any questions, and then move them forward to be able to do that. Got it. Um, so uh, Sarah Foster, you uh, recently graduated from San Antonio College, is that correct? That's right, uh, spring of 2020. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, just tell me a, a little bit about yourself to oh, start with. Okay, sure. Um, so I did leave high school early. Um, the 10th grade was my last year. And I didn't pursue college immediately. I did try to do a couple of semesters when I was 21, and then my father passed away, so that was difficult. I was also working full time, and supporting myself so I just I stopped going um, 10 over 10 years later is when I started back at the Alamo colleges I was very encouraged by friends that had done the same kind of thing and at that time I'd already started a family I had two children um, a house to take care of and everything like that I was working full-time but uh, the Alamo colleges really made the transition easy for me I was very encouraged by everyone there I started um, with the Honors Academy at San Antonio College and um, just ended up with a great advisor named Casey Tomez. She was amazing and she just encouraged me the entire time. It took me a little over three years to finish my associates and then I just transferred flawlessly into UTSA. All, all of my credits went right in um, and I used the student transfer guide as well and the UTSA uh, student transfer center was very helpful. And you. Uh like most students uh, at SAC were part-time, is that correct? I was, yeah. yeah. I think I had one or two semesters where I was able to go full-time, but I'm, when I started SAC, I was actually pregnant with my second child, so that was a part-time semester, and then I went back when she was six months old, and I think at that time I was able to go full-time, but it was off and on. It was definitely, it was difficult being, you know, a mom and having a job and everything else, so, but they really worked with me, so. So um, what made you want to start at, at SAC? Did you always think you wanted to go on to UTSA? Yeah, I definitely had UTSA in mind. That's where my father graduated from. Um, I think for, with SAC, it was just, it was really intimidating for me to go back to school at, at a later age. Um, it was actually very different than when I was in there before. I was startled when I didn't have a paper um, a catalog for the classes, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, and also the cost. I mean, I saved so much money starting at the Alamo Colleges. I didn't take out any loans. I used financial aid, um, grants, and stuff like that. So that was a big, a big thing. And the smaller class sizes, I think, were helpful as well. Um, it was more of an intimate setting, and it was easier for me, you know, to start school that way. And um, you know, really became close with some of my professors and they were just super encouraging. And you develop really um, close ties with people in the Alamo Colleges. I did at SAC anyway, so, nice. yeah. So what, um, how did you find out about the Transfer Advising Guide? Um, that was my advisor in the Honors Academy. That was Casey Tomez. She told me about that. And she just said, you know, go make an appointment with somebody at the UTSA Transfer Center at SAC. So I did that, and then the advisor there was so helpful. Um, that was, I think, the that was fall semester before I graduated. So, oh, so you, you took several classes before you knew that you wanted to transfer, or that you that, that the guide existed. Oh yeah, it, I I started in 2017, so Casey didn't tell me until like like halfway through, I think. But it was so helpful because I don't recall taking anything. No, I didn't take anything that didn't transfer over. Oh, wow. That's, so, yeah. that's pretty amazing then. Yeah. Once you got the guide, then um, was that 
did that make it a lot easier for you to know what classes to take? Or what? I think it did because I had heard you know horror stories of other students, obviously many years ago, transferring and then having all of these credits that didn't count for anything. And you spend all that time in school, mm -hmm. you really don't want that to be the case. You know, put a lot of effort into it, and when your credits don't transfer, it's really disappointing. So when I did use the transfer guide, it was a relief. Like okay, I'm on the right path. Everything's gonna go flawlessly, and it and it really did. And then in the transition over to UTSA, how did that go? That that went really smoothly as well. Um, again, I I'm in the psychology department, and their advisors are great, so I have a great advisor there, and she just anything I need, you know, I've been able to contact her, and she gets back with me right away. And yeah, it's it's been it's been very easy. And it's your first year there, right? It's my first year. Okay. Yeah. And are you working while you go to school at UTSA as um, well? I actually was up until January, so yeah. Okay. And I'm looking into other things. I've had a couple of job offers already, so I don't know. Oh, what yeah. do you What do you want to do after college? Um, I I want to do clinical psychology. I'd like to get my doctorate. Um, that is a long long journey. <laughs> Seems a little daunting right now, but um, that that's my ultimate goal. Okay, but, but a, a job first before you go straight on to... Yeah, I'd like to at least work part-time. Um, my girls are now going to be school-aged in the fall, oh, wow. so I, I feel like I'll have a little more energy. That's a big I... transition. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So they won't be home with me anymore. Okay. So, Are you... Um, I was going to say, what advice do you have for... for um, future uh, Alma College students or current Alma College students for yeah. about transfers? Mainly, um, I know it's intimidating, but once you get your foot in the door and you make connections, you're, there's so much support there. Once you get a good advisor, once you meet a few of your professors, there's just so much support from everyone, and you will have questions, you will feel a little lost, but you can do it, you will get there, and you'll have a lot of support. So take advantage of your advisor. Yes, 100%. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Um, Dr. Flores, you've been doing this, uh, these guides for about five years now, is that right? Yes. Um, what, has there been one thing in particular that you think has really, that you've seen a success in? Or um, I'll start there, yes. I think it's it's what Sarah mentioned, right? It really is that partnership. So it's a student being able to connect with their advisor, like um, like she did with Casey Thomas, and just a relationship and rapport that they build. Um, and then Casey being able to then uh, look at the transfer advising guides as resources, dependent upon what Sarah wanted to major in when she got to UTSA, and to be able to plan that out. So it's, it's the partnership with the student, their uh, academic advisor, and then the resource that they're using are the transfer advising guides. And then the other part is it's a partnership with the university. So we're really uh, fortunate to have um, leaders like Dr. Amy and the faculty and staff at UTSA, the advisor that Sarah mentioned at the Transfer Center at UTSA, because that partnership that we have uh, with UTSA is really critical. It's supported all the way from the president, all the way through the institution. And we have a, a, a common goal, right? It's a win, win, win. The, the win for the student is that they are going to uh, go term to term and that they're gonna cross that finish line and earn their credential um, and then pursue the next challenge that they've set for themselves, like Sarah. Um, and then the win for, the, for each institution is that our students are able to do that and earn that degree. And um, I think that's important. UTSA was the first institution to sign what we call the transfer compact. That involves 20 institutions, also Texas A&M, University of San Antonio. That involves all of our private institutions and we partner with Austin Community College on that. So 20 of us within the region have committed to ensure that uh, we have uh, thousands of students that are able to do what Sarah did um, and so that she can then earn her PhD right in a number of years she's you're already on your <laughs> pathway so I think that's what's super critical and so we're fortunate um, to do that have you seen uh, an increase or any improvement in uh, just persistence as a result of this? Because I imagine um, yes. there are students that were frustrated. They were saying, no. 
oh my gosh, my, my, my classes aren't transferring. I'm just going to give up. I'm not going to transfer. I'm just going right. to not complete my degree at all. So we have from, we have definitely from our end, so uh, just a testimonial that Sarah provided. We've seen uh, that students are saving uh, time, right? Four and a half to three and a half years. They're saving money. We see from all our compact partners, students starting with us, taking the classes only that they need. We estimate that to be a savings of over $370 million just over the last five years. Um, and then the other part is what Dr. Amy mentioned in the previous segment, which was that they are now seeing more students from SAC and our colleges. They're seeing that students are graduating with uh, less hours and less time, and they're seeing also an increase in applications from the Alamo colleges. I think all of those are dividends, but the ultimate is when Sarah crosses the stage and earns her credential. Well, uh, Dr. Flores, uh, Sarah Foster, thank you so much for uh, speaking to me, and thank you uh, for sharing your advice. Um, and like Dr. Flores, you were saying, is that transfer guides are intended to be a guide, so students out there take advantage. Uh, I'm Camille Phillips, education reporter at Texas Public Radio. You've been listening to Take Two with TPR in partnership with the Alamo Colleges District.